Across the world in this air age, every airport's a concentration of local pride, a vision of the future. From Hong Kong to Guatemala, I've spent a lot of my life in these national showplaces. Switzerland, with a population not much greater than in this area, has 46 airports, four of them intercontinental. Denmark has seven. Finland, with fewer people than this county, has 16 airports. Yorkshire has Yeadon. The very first look at Yorkshire for anyone arriving by air. Today, as more and more people take to the skies, the Leeds Bradford Airport presents our image. Other lands, other ways. At New York, airliners nuzzle up to Mother Airport, spreading a protective mantle to shelter and absorb. Yeadon breeds a tougher traveller, soon dismissed into a cold world, disgorged and left to fend for themselves. Not for them the easy way, no effete innovations, a mobile lounge, a massive chariot bearing them towards the splendour of yet another air age palace. Today, such shining temples stun the traveller by smooth opulence. Yeadon's approach is less flamboyant. Despite the importance of Yorkshire and Humberside, despite the significance of its international trade, Leeds Bradford ranks 16th in the passenger league table of British airports though it's hard to believe this area rates itself only 16th in national importance. So, why has Yorkshire and the North East lost out in the airport stakes? You remember what happened to places which resisted the arrival of railways a century ago? They stagnated. So, why is it that an area once so wide awake to the importance of transport today seems to be turning its back on the air age? Chairman of the Leeds Bradford Airport Committee, Alderman Frank Marshall. I think to be realistic, one must uh, certainly say that uh, Yeadon's role is not the role of a uh, continental airport, international airport in the way of doing uh, transatlantic flights, but we uh, see our role as a very important role of uh, flying to all European countries. Um, we are uh, that sort of airport. But what staggers me is that you don't appear to want to be an international airport. I would have thought you'd have been pounding on the doors, this demanding. Is a, this is a difference, I believe, uh, in uh, the use of terms between you and I. Um, an international airport has a special connotation uh, in airport uh, parlance. Um, and that we are not, and I think we've no prospect of being uh, classified as an international airport. Uh, Manchester certainly is, London Heathrow is, uh, Glasgow is, Prestwick may be, I think yes, Prestwick may be, but uh, that apart, they are the only four, I think, international airports I know of in this country at the present time. Uh, uh, of course, I include Gatwick a fifth. There's no reason why this should always be so, presumably, in an, an area as important as you say it is. No, but I think one must be realistic about the uh, uh, carryings from any particular airport. And uh, if you look at the uh, carryings from uh, uh, Manchester, they're of course in excess of ours, or Glasgow, or of course Heathrow and Gatwick. But that might be because they have more planes going to more places. I don't believe so. I think this is the weight of population and the uh, customer demand. And the customer demand does not exist, naturally cannot exist in the uh, inner centre such as this, as it does in London. And people cannot expect uh, to my view, can't expect a long-haul flight of this sort starting in their hometown. Obviously, it seems to me Yorkshire's got a fight for its position on the airways of the world, but it seems it has little chance of winning when, when its champions, like yourself, um, are, are reconciled to such a subservient position, to Lancashire even. Uh, well, all right, uh, you call it subservient. We don't agree on this. Uh, we have an airport here now doing a very worthwhile job and the job required by the people who live in these parts. 
Just over the Pennines, Manchester had other ideas about the job required by people who live in those parts. Ringway didn't wait for customer demand. It set out to create it, and in 1951, that's 17 years ago, already had a longer runway than Yeadon has today. Lancashire's airport's now the fourth busiest in the land, handling a million and a half passengers a year, five times Yeadon's total. Some people still believe that an international airport's always an expensive luxury, a crippling charge on the rates. But a successful airport is quite another story. Manchester Airport's been contributing to the rates for seven years. And last year handed ratepayers a handsome profit of £200,000. It's also a show place, something to be proud of. Manchester Airport Terminal Building was completed in 1962 and cost £2.8 million pounds for the inside building alone. Um, this is the main concourse where we're standing now. Up here we have the chandeliers, which are made of hand-blown Venetian glass. Each chandelier contains 1,300 drops of this glass. Each chandelier weighs two tonnes and costs £3,000. On the concourse, there are lots of facilities available for passengers. We have a ladies and gents hairdressers, a bank, a post office, bookstall, fruit stall, sweet shop, and licensed restaurants and buffets. And from here, we can clearly see the main runway over on my left. Um, at present, the runway is 7,900 feet long, but it's being extended to 9,000 feet. But when the runway extension is completed, um, the Concords and 717s will be able to take off from here and go directly to New York and Canada. So today the Northwest is a direct gateway to the world, and jets leave Ringway for North America, the Caribbean, the European capitals. Fourteen international airlines fly here. Yeadon has only one foreign airline, and that's Air Lingus. There's Air Charter, and last year 37,000 tons of freight were airlifted out of Ringway, an increase of 42%, and the kind of facility that brings in new industry and makes more jobs. Fourteen years ago, Ringway came under control of a thrusting director who was thinking 20 years ahead. George Harvey was determined to write Manchester big on the air routes of the world. Now, and what do you think an airport does for its community? What do you think Ringway has done? Well, it is a facility for the businessman, not just for these light aircraft that fly around, although uh, in any area, uh, this is becoming a, a, a greater, a greater f used facility. But so many business houses are now using their own aircraft, as you see with the aircraft that are over here yes. at the present time. Yes, as well. And then there is the, um, the ordinary business travel, people who don't own their aircraft. This is a facility that, for the businessman. It is a facility on the freight particularly. And I think that the provincial centres have a very large potential for freight development. And lastly, of course, uh, for people going abroad on holidays, it is a facility close to their, to their domiciles, and this is what they want. Now, you don't uh, pay much attention to uh, local pride and status in this summit. Well, uh, this is true. I, many people in the past and, and in many theatres of, of this world do things for prestige. Personally, being a Scot, I like to see if there's something behind it rather than prestige. Prestige after you've got solid achievement. Good. Not otherwise. Don't you agree that the growth potential of flying is so great that no self-respecting community can afford to be without the most modern airport it can afford? Uh, well, you may have given the answer in your own question, Mr. Wicker, there. The most modern airport it can afford. 
Uh, but this is a costly enterprise, as I say, and um, we think we're doing everything required of us at the present time. Um, and uh, there comes a time when uh, you just can't build something so far in ahead of demand that uh, you're losing out financially the whole time. I think yeah. you must keep abreast of demand, but we can't afford to go uh, uh, 20 years ahead right now. Yet isn't Eden doomed? It's doomed by its site, its position, its weather, its the length of its runway. Well, shall we see? Uh, shall we just say this, that history will say whether or not Eden is doomed. I think Eden has got uh, 25 years of very good life um, and very useful life for air travel. Airport runways, ideally, are flat. But just watch this Viscount emerge from Yeadon's rolling landscape. So Leeds Bradford copes efficiently with disadvantages handed down since its birth as a grass strip 37 years ago. It has an improbable site for an airfield on a hilltop. It's almost 700 feet above sea level, so often it's way up in the clouds itself. The advancing motorways ignore it, and today there are complaints about noise. The runway is 5,400 feet long and can only handle Viscounts. In three years' time, it may extend a couple of thousand feet if objections, inquiries, authorities and ministers permit. To tunnel this main road will cost two and a quarter million pounds. And even then, Yeadon will never be able to handle big jets because way out there in the mist, there's another hillside. As a, a, a businessman, how has this lack of airport facilities uh, here in the northeast affected you? Well, the most obvious way it's affected my business is that uh, is this object you see behind it, this yeah. aircraft, which is one of our two aircraft. We've got another over in the hangar. Uh, we've had to lay out here runways in order to provide ourselves with the sort of facilities that we think a reasonably aggressive business needs to be able to work from this area, to go to the northern continent, to go to different parts of Europe, we've had to lay out our own facilities because of the lack of national ones. Because business is much more air-minded now, of course. Oh, certainly. We, uh, uh, but even, um, say, uh, ten years ago, we could see that there was a need for an airport around here which wasn't being fulfilled. Um, in 1960, for example, I um, had to bring a party of Germans over here uh, for a demonstration and a conference in, in Carrick Hall. And um, we flew them to Manchester. It was rather bad weather. There was snow, one thing or another. It took us five hours to bring them across by car from Manchester when it had taken an hour and a half to fly after Manchester, covering the same ground. And they mildly said in the car, why do we have to travel over the same territory we've already done? Couldn't we land somewhere east of the Pennines and go rapidly to your office? And this, is a, this was 10 years ago, and still the same is true exactly today. The new motorway across the Pennines will make it easier for Freddie Wood's German customers, but as West Riding's deputy planning officer points out, it'll also make poor old Yeadon easier for travellers to bypass. Yeah, I think in the first instance, there will be a dramatic loss of the uh, catchment area population to a ringway, whether we like it or not. So ringway will be pirating passengers from this area? Oh, well, it'll be attracting by its own, own uh, excellent services. Yes. Uh, the trade which we, at this moment, are not able to offer here in the West Riding. So, uh, Eden's future looks uh, a bit bleak. Eden's future, I think, is assured, but on a scale commensurate to its location. That's uh, a pretty nasty thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the communication system to Eden is such that it has a limited catchment area, particularly when the motorway system is in full development. Well, let's say that. something about Yorkshire insularity. I mean, why are they not thinking in 20 years' time we must be able to get on an aircraft and fly from here to Rome or even fly from here to New York? Is that so remarkable? Oh, yes, there is a high degree of insularity in Yorkshire thinking. And I think this has been highlighted by this uh, communication system where we have tended to think locally rather than to think regionally. You see, why aren't you down in Whitehall hammering on doors you know, and demanding? Well, this I hope we shall be shortly, because with this new motorway system which is coming along now, we have been 
investigating a site for a new airfield here in what is generally known as the Ghoul Thorn area. And this is the airfield which we think which will serve the whole of the Yorkshire and Humberside region because it is so wonderfully located in relation to the evolving motorway system. Now this could be the third national airport as opposed to the third London airport. Well, we would like to think that this is going to be a candidate for consideration for uh, uh, that role in, in, in national airport planning. Uh, we're hoping that the new commission which has been established by the Board of Trade, headed by Mr Justice Roskill, will be receiving evidence from us uh, on this airfield in the hope that this will be considered by them for this third facility. Now you want to go on the short list uh, with Stansted and Falness and any other area? Uh, we're hopeful that this might happen. So it would seem that an airport like this is offering this area international status at last. Yes. Isn't everyone falling over themselves with enthusiasm? Not at the present time. Um, this is a problem which has been developing for a long number of years. Well, what's the problem? The, the problem here is to bring together the representative authorities in this region to a common line of thought. Because this is international. This is not Leeds versus Sheffield. Not a bit. Or Yeadon versus Ringway. This is, this is something that's international for the entire region. Absolutely. And if this isn't one of the nation's major airports, then I'm hoping that it will be an airport which will serve the whole of the region, rather than a particular section of it. Well, I think that they should press ahead with the Goulthorn development as rapidly as possible. I think that you shouldn't wait around and argue about whether you're going to get the traffic or whether there's going to be enough people. That you, there is going to be enough traffic. There must be. The, apart from holiday traffic, there must be the business tra travel in the next ten years. And therefore, we should just go ahead and... and um, uh, prepare for it now. I mean, anybody in business does this, you have to take a calculated risk. You can't guarantee you're going to have a market. But people, when they talk about airports, seem to want an absolutely cast-iron guarantee that they're going to have so much traffic that they'll be able to maintain it. What you've got to do in this instance is just go ahead and put the airport down and start to uh, uh, build the traffic around it. After you've got a service, you'll create your own demand. Sure. The more rapid the service and the better the service, the more demand there will be. But the particular thing about transport is that if you don't have the transport, there is no demand. If you don't have a car, you don't have people queuing at you, your family don't want you to take them out in the car because the question never comes up. And in the same way, no one can use a facility that isn't there. So when the lack of a decent airport arrangement in this area, there is no, there is no demand. Well, it has been said, of course, that an international airport at Goul or Thorn uh, would be a great fillip to um, business in that area. As far as uh, we're concerned, uh, we say this, that we are already in business, we're here. As far as Goulthorne is concerned, this is a point on a map. It's uh, a few uh, fields on a farm. Um, and uh, uh, anybody in the world can talk about uh, something in the future, but uh, uh, our views are that an international airport uh, is not required in that area. It has been said that uh, Ghoul Thorn would be um, an alternative to Stansted. But I ask you, are people coming from uh, the southeast of England to Ghoul Thorn area for the purpose of catching a, a flight to America? I mean, this is just uh, ridiculous in my view. So here is that point on the map. The possible site for an intercontinental airport. Ghoul Fields Thorn Waste. And it's not just a pipe dream either, for an expert survey just completed estimates that in its very first year an airport sited here would handle 100,000 passengers and that within five or six years it would be coping with a quite amazing one million passengers a year. It may not look like it, but this desolation is at the heart of three important industrial areas and has superb communications. It's soon to be bordered by three motorways. It's near the main London-Scotland railway line, with the line to Hull along one boundary. There's a deep water port nearby, and within a few years, some four and a half million people will be living within 45 minutes of this wasteland. These things are here already. What happens otherwise may be just a dream, could become reality. Most of this is Grade 5 agricultural land, 
the very worst there is. So the Ministry of Agriculture wouldn't complain at giving it up. Noise, the big problem with giant jets and supersonic aircraft, noise will be less intrusive here than almost anywhere else in the country. For flight paths could be such that aircraft could come in over the Humber estuary and fly out on a line between Wakefield and Barnsley or to the south over Moorland. With all its spin-off activities, such an airport would bring many thousands of new jobs. And at holiday time, anywhere in Europe would be just minutes away. And after all, why should London and the congested southeast have a third enormous airport? Which, after all, we're all going to have to pay for. They've already got London Airport and Gatwick, not to mention Stansted and Southend, Lyd and Luton. Why should the South East have all the facilities once again? And why should we in Yorkshire be satisfied with what we've got? I'd vote for a certain splendid dissatisfaction. So, let's hope that on the 16 planning authorities of Yorkshire and Humberside, there are today sufficient men of determination with the foresight to go out and get Yorkshire its due. To my mind, an important airport on these useless acres would be the second best thing that's happened to Yorkshire. After the inauguration of Yorkshire Television, of course. So, from the centre of the runway of what could be our third intercontinental airport, good night.